I'm in the process of restoring this 1980s Raleigh and the previous owner who said this came without a seat post had put in his own seat post, tightened the seat tube bolt as tight as possible, but said that the seat still moved up and down. So how do we figure out the correct diameter seat post that will fit this bike? We'll loosen the seat tube bolt. Remove the post, and if we look closely at the bottom, see right above my thumb it says 25.4, so we need something slightly larger diameter. Several things we need to do before we take any measurements for seat post diameter. First, look at the slot in the back. The sides should be parallel such that it allows for tightening of the seat post bolt or seat clamp of about a millimeter of, or so. And we can see on this, it's a little bit hard to visualize, but the, the sides are not parallel and the top is a little bit closer together than the bottom. We can use a straight edge screwdriver, wiggle it back and forth until we get the sides parallel. After wiggling the straight edge on the top portion of the slot, we have now have the sides of the slot nearly parallel. Finally, with a little isopropyl alcohol and an old cloth, we'll wipe down the inside of the seat tube, move any grease or grime that may affect our measurement and make sure there are no burrs that need to be filed off. Most videos suggest we use calipers to measure the inner diameter of the seat tube in order to determine the seat post. Now we have to remember the seat posts vary by 0.2 millimeters so the measurement really has to be very precise. Let's take a measurement we'll do this at right angles. Our first measurement 25.3 right angles our second measurement 25.9 or 0.88 well that's not really very precise the problems really come in the fact that a lot depends on the way you're holding your calipers when you take the measurement and where you're taking that is the angle at which you take it. This may give us a good ballpark on newer bikes, but on older bikes the top circumference may not be completely round due to welding and brazons. As a result, there are better methods. My preference is a three-part sizing gauge. You can pick one up on eBay for about $35, $37. We'll show you how it works and how to use it, but if you don't want to go out and spend the money on this, I'm sure your local bike store has tools similar to this and would be glad to measure the diameter of the seat tube and order the correct part for you. There are smaller ones, but they're kind of hard to read. The way these are put together, let's take a look here let's say at the 25.4 which we knew was too small when we insert this into the C2 the bottom of the 25.4 is about 25.3 the top is 25.5 so if we insert this and it goes to the middle it's 25.4 remember that the C2 is vary in two millimeter increments 25.2, 25.4, 25.6 25, 8, etc. The way this works, we take a, one of the tubes that fit, carefully let it slide into the C-tube. Note the point where it stops, which is halfway on this one, 25.8. So we'll utilize a 25.8 millimeter C-tube. Using a C-post whose diameter is 25.8 millimeters. When we insert it, 
slides in very nicely. Only the tiniest little bit of give. We tighten the bolt. Appears to be very secure. Does not move up and down. And there's still a little gap in the slot in the seat tube. So we'll remove this, put on some fibro grip, and the saddle are ready to roll. We'll apply some carbon fiber paste such as fiber grip because it contains a small particles that compress and prevent slippage and allow you to tighten the seat tube bolt or collar clamp at a lower torque and not have the seat post slip. So let's go ahead and insert this above the minimum We'll tighten the seat post bolt. Okay, this bike is ready for a new owner. Any questions, suggestions, please put them in the comments below. Subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony of Tony 10 Speed Safe Cycling.